good. to our Monday Thursday service. We are knee deep in the middle of Holy Week and all week we have been gathering at 10 o'clock and beginning to prepare ourselves for what this night will look like. If you have a candle at your table or in your home I would invite you to light your candle and as you're logging in online um, be sure to say hi to each other as you're logging in and as we share in this time together, be always reminded that the lighting of the candle, of the Christ candle, is a symbol of the Holy Spirit in our presence. And we are grateful that God has put us together this night. Hopefully you have some elements, cookies, crackers, bread, juice, that you will share as we go along. The bulletin and the hymns were sent out via email earlier this week so if you have those you can sing along and do the words with me together if not um, just just listen and watch and allow the spirit to guide you in our time together so i would invite you to pray with me as we begin tonight god thank you for this night this night around the table this night that begins with the washing of feet and ends with a commandment that we are to love each other. Might we all do that in great ways. Bless our time together and your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So our opening hymn tonight is What Wondrous Love Is This? And we're going to be singing the first and the third verse. <laughs>
prayer for the night. Holy God, you are the source of all love. Write Jesus' commandment to love others on our hearts. Give us the will to love and to serve others in Jesus' name. Amen. So our scripture this morning, or tonight, first of all comes from Psalm 116, verses 12 through 19. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. And from the Gospel of John, in chapter 13, we hear the story of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to go and leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the fullest extent of his love. As the evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath only needs to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that is why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He, he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I'll be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. For the word of God in Scripture for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. I have my pitcher and my basin here. If you have something at your table or you gather with your family, if you wish, I invite you to pour that and simply wash your hands as we begin to think about what it means to be around the table.
So I've always been fascinated with this story that happens around this table. This story where, well, we've seen it in paintings. We have the Last Supper picture at the church. And they're all gathered there around the table. And I'm always fascinated by this story because, one, I think what happens in the midst of this catches them very much by surprise. It changes their lives. It also frightens them, I believe. And it also may give them direction for the future of their lives. Oh, I can think about these disciples. I wish, you know, you could have been there. To be there and watch as Jesus washes their feet. The conversations that I like to imagine are around the table you know, when they talk about Lazarus, the story we know well. Lazarus, who had been dead for three days, and Jesus rose him from the grave. Or the party they had just been at, at the home of Lazarus, in honor of Jesus, and all that took place there, and the conversations that were there. We could go back even farther in the story. It wasn't that long ago that the disciples with Jesus rode into Jerusalem. And they heard the crowds shouting Hosanna. And they thought that they had accomplished this great thing by riding into Jerusalem. We didn't talk about this part of the story, but after Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, he went to the temple. And he turned over the tables of the money changers. Imagine if you're a disciple and you're watching all of this happened right in front of your face. And the stories, the stories go on and on. I would imagine around the table that night, the conversations would have been varied. They already wondered who might be the greatest. They had already asked the question, who gets to be on the left and who gets to be on the right of Jesus when they arrive in their kingdom? I imagine this meal being very loud, that the conversations over here were drowning out the conversations over here. <coughs> and, and they didn't always hear what each other was saying. But in the midst of that, the scripture is so clear about what happens. As the meal has been served, And the devil had already prompted Judas. Jesus goes and washes the feet of the disciples. A strange thing to do. So strange that Peter questioned it, right? So strange that Peter wondered, what did this all mean? And, and why don't you wash my hands and my head as well? I imagine when, when Jesus got done around the table there were many questions and I can picture those loud conversations now suddenly be met with silence and Jesus asked them do you understand what I just did for you you call me teacher and Lord and, and that's what you should call me because that's what I am but what I've just done for you is what you should do for each other. And what does that mean for us? Wash each other's feet? Oh, that seems strange. If we were to have conversations in your, around your table, in your home, if you're with other folks, can you imagine having to wash the stinkiest feet around your table tonight? And who they might belong to? Who do those stinky feet belong to in your family? You know, the one who has to keep his shoes or her, her shoes at the door and not bring them in the house. So did Jesus really want us to take water and wash each other's feet? Maybe, but maybe also what he wants us to do is to recognize in each other our humanity. Knowing that we are children of the living God. 
And no one's greater than their master. We're not greater than the messenger who sent us. But when we gather around the table, we are one in the same, the body of Christ. Think about what that might mean at your table. When I was a kid growing up, we always ate around the table. And we passed the food to the right, always to the right. And we took what we needed and we said, we please pass the potatoes back. And when we got done eating, we had to ask to be excused. Anybody else live like that? Those days were incredible days that I look back on and think that those days around the table with my mom and dad and my brother and my sister those days around the table form in us this idea that the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup and the washing of the hands and the feet are a reminder of God's presence in our lives This washing of the feet, while the disciples didn't get it, you had to know it stuck with them. And it stayed with them for the rest of their lives. And then Jesus, in the second half of our scripture, says this to the disciples. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. To tell you, I read this over and over again today, preparing for tonight, and, and for the life of me, I would suggest that that commandment had already been given. And maybe it had. Maybe Jesus had already said to those around, that you should love your neighbor as yourself and love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And maybe to the large crowd that had been already said, but around the table, around the table, to those chosen disciples that night, Jesus gave them a new mandate. And the mandate was simple, but difficult. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, all will know that you are my disciples. Maybe that's the difference, this new commandment given. Maybe the difference is, is that those of us, you and I, watching from various places around, you and I are called to love each other in such a way that someone could look at us, someone from afar, someone who gathered with us brand new at our table, would look at us by our actions and say that we are disciples. We are followers. We are people of the way. And how do they know? Because of our deep love for each other. I have to tell you, this night has been difficult to prepare for. Because typically on Monday, Thursday, I have spent the entire day cooking for all of you, which I love to do. And the tables are set. And we meet in the fellowship hall, and when we're done, we sing and Jen plays the keyboard <clears throat> and the acoustics in that place they, they just make us sound like this choir that sings I have to tell you I miss that tonight it's emotion welled up inside of me and yet in our separateness in our homes wherever we are the mandate remains. Love one another. And not just love that's flim flam or love that's holding the door or love that says thank you, 
No, Jesus said the kind of love that he's talking about is recognizable. That a person would look at you right away without any idea knowing who you are, and the love that would exude from their very being would be this love that Jesus tells us to have, and they would know. Do you hear that? That's the kind of love that Jesus wants his disciples to have. And he wants them to have it because he knows. He knows in the hours to come, life as they know it is going to change drastically. They'll betray Jesus, even though Peter says he won't. They'll hide in the upper room for fear of the Jews. They'll watch Jesus die. They'll see the stone rolled in front of the tomb. And their new emotion will be fear. So Jesus says, listen, when this all changes, and it's going to, and when I leave and go where you can't go, and I will, What's going to sustain you? What's going to make a difference in your life? Is that you love one another. And so here we are, Monday, Thursday, doing this worship in a remote kind of way. In your homes, in my living room, in my makeshift worship space. And the fear of changed life is real. We haven't reached the end of this set of circumstances. And frankly, I'm hopeful, but I don't know what's on the other side of it. But what I do know, what I do know fully, what's on the other side of it is this mandate. That we are to love each other. And if we learn nothing else from being locked in our homes, if we learn nothing else from this social distancing, if we learn nothing else from having to worship like this, might we learn the importance of the love that we have for each other? And if we learn it, and if we hold tight to it, oh, God will change us. And we'll be ready for what's next. May this word, may our love for each other, may the cleansing of our hands and the calming of our spirits and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives be enough for us this night to sustain and to carry us. In our prayers together tonight, we pray for many people, many who are working on the front lines, many who are fearful. We continue to pray for those who struggle, whose lives are difficult. We pray for those who grieve. We pray for those who, who need love in their lives. So. We'll have a moment of silent prayer, and then I will pray, and then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. So pray with me, if you will. Holy God, it's on this night that we commemorate the gathering around the table of Jesus with the disciples. Oh, how we wish we could have been there to hear those conversations. And we might have had the same questions. Are we going to get to go? Who is indeed the greatest? Who gets to be on the left and the right? And then we too are surprised, even though we know the story, God, that Jesus in the midst of that, washes our feet and asks us to wash the feet of others 
to love them right where they are. And then Jesus calls us tonight to love in such a way, to love in such a way that your love is so recognizable in our actions, in our thoughts, and in our words that people can't help but notice and must say of us, they must be people of the way, followers of Jesus the Christ. Oh God, for those who are on the front lines of this work, for those who help us in drugstores and grocery stores, for those doctors and nurses and, and everybody else who is needed to make a hospital run, we pray, God, for your mercy and for your grace and for your love for them. We pray for those today who grieve, whose hearts are heavy. We pray that we might, God, pray for them as well and offer them your love. Oh, God, thank you for our time together. Thank you for the water that cleanses us, for the bread and the cup that nourishes us, and for the love for we have for each other that sustains us even when we're apart. We give you thanks, God, for your presence with us. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>
So if you have your elements ready, whatever you have tonight, I will share with you this invitation. Christ gave us the mandate to love one another. Christ gave us the peace that we will never be left alone. Christ gave us the picture that we are connected as vine and branches. Christ gave us the assurance that no one will take away our joy. God is with you. God is with us all. We open our hearts wide. We open them to new possibilities. From our dining room tables to our home offices, this is the time tonight when we give thanks to God. Some homes might be filled with young voices. Some homes might be filled with overwhelming silence. Some tables might be filled to the brim with family. Or we might be sitting by ourselves at an empty table. But the table is never truly empty. The silence you hear now will not last forever and will not be the last sound that you hear. Jesus the Christ has created a realm of love for each of us, one in which we will be reunited with loved ones, one in which we are assured of God's comfort. It was a night filled with teaching and memories. Undoubtedly tears were shed and laughs raised. This was the night before Jesus died, and Jesus took bread, and as he blessed it, he broke it. And he said to his friends, whenever you eat this bread, eat it in remembrance of me. And later Jesus took the cup, filled with the fruit of the vine, and he says, friends, this is the new covenant. Drink this to remember me. Drink to, remember, drink to remember our time together. So, Spirit of God, surround the bread, surround the cup, surround the elements, no matter what form they take. Surround us, no matter who we are or where we are. Bless us in our eating and drinking. Bless our connection near and far. Even with physical distance between each one of us, our covenant with God will help us keep together. So, if you would, I would invite you to take whatever elements you have, and if there's more than one of you, serve each other. Pass it around. This is the body of Christ, friends. It's broken for you and for me, that we might know again that God has come to us and shared our common lot. Jesus said, every time you eat this, remember me and be thankful. Friends, the body of Christ broken for all of us this night. Eat of this, all of you. Remember Christ and be thankful. And Jesus took the cup. <clears throat> and again, he gave thanks and he poured it out. This cup is the cup of the new covenant. This cup is the reminder that we have a mandate to love each other. It's also a cup of forgiveness. The disciples took it and they drank it and they remembered. Friends, for you and I this night, this cup of the new covenant is for the, is for the forgiveness of our sins. It's a reminder that God's present with us. Friends, drink of this, all of you. Be forgiven. Remember Christ and be thankful. I invite you to pray with me. God, this cup and this bread, they are a reminder of your great love for us. And we give you thanks that tonight, around our own tables, we could gather. Be with us, forgive us, fill us with your love. Remind us to wash one another's feet and remind us to be always in your presence. 
We give you thanks for this night, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So our closing hymn tonight is Let Us Lick Brick Bread Together. So friends, as we have gathered this night around our tables, and we have washed our hands and shared in the bread and the cup, as we have prayed together, as we have put flame to the candle as a reminder of the Holy Spirit, this is a night of remembrance. This is a night to learn to love in a new way. And this is a night that's set apart for us, that we might know of the love of Jesus through the washing of the hands and the sharing of the cup and our love for each other. I pray that our love may grow so strong, me for you and you for me, that when people look at us, they'll know we've taken the mandate seriously. And then they might say of me, and they might say of you, and might say of us collectively that our love is so great that we must be followers of Jesus. That's my wish for you tonight and always. May you be wakened tomorrow to a fresh new day with the presence of God filling your very lives. Be in peace tonight and always. Amen.